So you've just bought a brand new wonder kid and you're not quite sure how to train him or develop him. This is the video for you. So you've just got the wonder kid in through the door and you're not quite sure how to train him, what to do with him and all that stuff. So for the purpose of this video, I introduce Vinicio Facundo. So Facundo is an Andorran wonder kid and he's now scoring 40 goals in 38 games in La Liga at the top level. Um, also in scoring in the Europa League and even in internationally in the Nations League and all that good stuff, right? So this guy is literally a wonder kid, but it wasn't always that way. Now you might be thinking, Lewis, wow, look how good he is at 20. He was always going to be good. He didn't do anything, etc., etc. But I'm going to show you this. Development, and then we're going to go to progress, and then we're going to go to all time. Now you guys can see the level at which this guy improved. So his dribbling when he came through was seven. Now obviously you had six, it's 13. His off the ball when he came through was five, as you can see down there. But it's absolutely flown up, and now it's 16. Decision making when he came through again was five. He had some glaring issues when he came through. He wasn't, he wasn't fantastic when he came through, and now he's 15. Now, the, you might be thinking, whoa, what, how, okay, how have you done that then? Um, the answer, honestly, the, the the biggest answer and the biggest reason is first team football. So if I go to his history. In the first season, when he came through, there was eight games left, and I played him, and he scored four goals. And then the second season, I used him almost every single game. Third season, every game. Fourth season, every game. And then this season, currently, I think every single game apart from a couple. Because, obviously, now we've got a better squad. I can afford to rest him a few times, so I don't absolutely kill him. So all this was done on stream. He literally came through, 15. Um, and this is how good he is. Now, I played him. The first thing, the most important thing is playing. You played players. Give them first team football. Now at the time, I didn't have state of the art facilities. Now I do, which so every youngster that comes through now, it's a little bit easy to train, right? I've got the luxury of having state of the art facilities. Let's say you don't have the best facilities, just play them, right? Play the first team players. Play them in the first team as much as you can. If you can't, give them minutes off the bench, give them against teams at the lower end of the league. If you two nil up, bring them on. But if you can't give them first team football for whatever reason, um. Have a look at their personality. So his personality is perfectionist. I don't know if it was always perfectionist, but it is now. And perfectionist is a very good personality. I didn't need to mentor him, nothing. I just stuck him straight in. Um, and the other thing I did is I went onto his development here and in the training tab, let me just get rid of that because it's really annoying. There we go. And when he, was, um, when he was 15, 16, and he had five off the ball, but I knew he was going to be a striker. Because his other attributes were good enough. He has good finishing. Um, he had decent pace. So I was like, ah, he's going to be a striker for me eventually. If he's going to make it. And at the time, I had an aging striker. And this save requires me only signing or having Andorran players. So I needed to use him. right? I had no choice. So I just threw him in. And if he would have had low pot lowish potential, I'd have been screwed. But thankfully he didn't. But I still had to get him to this level. And I did that through first team football, um, training, schedules, good coaches, good facility, but also in this development tab, the individual training on himself. So I went into here and I thought to myself, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be playing with an advance forward. So I went in here and I literally made him an advance forward because why not? I want them, I want the, I want him to hyper focus on his training, on the attributes that he's going to need in that role. For the purposes of this video. I'm going to change it to attacking movement. And the reason why is it tra attacking movement specializes in off the ball anticipation and decisions, right? So what happens there is he does train in the other attributes. So you can see the like the lightish green ones, right? Dribbling, finishing, first touch, passing, technique, work rate, all these, right? So he'll work in those. But the blue ones are the additional focus. As you can see, it's green there, the little green icon, and the little blue icon there. So the green ones are the, the ones that train the position role and duty, and the blue ones are the additional focus. Now, even if I take that off, he does still work on decisions, anticipation, and off the ball because he's an advanced forward and they need those traits. But I want to hyper-focus on those. I want him to put more effort into those three because his decision-making was really low when he came in, and his off the ball was really low when he came in. So I wanted to just bring those right up to speed. So straight away for the first two or three seasons, I just had him on off attacking movement, right? And I put him on double intensity. 
Now, I do that with all my youngsters. I put them on double intensity. But there's much more to that, right? I was a bit, little bit lucky in, in retrospect with Facundo that he had good personality. I didn't need to loan him out. But you guys might be looking at this and thinking, right, well, I, I need to be playing my good players because I'm on for five, five champ, five, my fifth Champions League or I'm in for six trophies this season and I can't afford to play this 16-year-old. Okay, no problem. So you might want to look at loaning him out. So I quickly just jumped onto my other save a second, just to put this into practice. So I have Macaulay Teal on my Barnsley save, right? This guy, I'm looking to loan him out. Now, I don't think he's ever going to become a world beater, but I might be able to sell him on for 12, 15 million. And it's a nice little kitty um, for a couple of seasons time. So he came through our academy and I'm going to loan him out to try and give him the best possible chance of getting to his potential so I can sell him. So I offered him out, uh, transfer offer to clubs, picked on loan, obviously. Um, and then what I did is, well, what I didn't do, but what you can do, is agreed playing time. I like to set set this as regular starter or important player. And if you do that, you can like hard tick it or you can untick it. So it's negotiable, right? Basically non-negotiable, negotiable. negotiable. Um, leave it non-selected, I think, to give you the wide range of um, of offers because you might get an important player, right? If, if you lock it as a regular starter, you might miss out on the important player ones. So you could just leave it, but I've already done this anyway. Um, and then I go to the messages, and these are the guys that have come in from Macaulay Teal. So we've got Wimbledon, Portsmouth, Port Vale, Northampton, Grimsby, Sh Chesterfield, Barnet, Newport. Now, a lot of people, when they're loaning a player out, what they might do is they might click on respond and accept all offers. Bang, he's gone, right? But he might pick the wrong option himself. So it's down to you. So this might seem, when all these offers come in, it might seem like a real problematic thing and a hard thing to sift through. But straight away, what we can do, fringe player, gone. Fringe player, Gone. We do not want fringe player offers. No. No. Right. That's those three. Gone. So, let's have a look. The highest league here is League 2. The lowest. Conference National. What we could do is we can go to League 2. Uh, well, let's remember the players as well in League 2 because we want the highest level football possible. So, Newport and Northampton. So, we click on League 2. It loads. There we go. And in season preview, we want Northampton. Newport and mid-table. So, I'm more likely to go to Newport because Northampton are down here. So let's have a look at Newport's facilities. Below average. Not great. Northampton have got average. Below average as well. Okay. Right. Let's have a look now at Grimsby. Grimsby are quite a big team as well. So they might have better facilities. Below average. Okay. So there's nothing really that's setting these guys apart. Barnet. I think Barnet have got good facilities, haven't they? Great training facilities. Oh, that's quite a jump. That is quite a jump. Chesterfield. Adequate. So, great. is really good. I'd go Barnet. Just for the facilities and the one level below. I'd go Barnet there. It's quite lucky that we got Barnet in there. And perfect. They're also looking to finish in the top six or should be finishing the top six. So, like, that's how I do it. Sift through. And then what we can do is we can just reject everything else. So, it goes through quicker. He doesn't have to choose. We're not giving him a choice. He's gone to Barnet. And that is perfect. That's how I do it. It's just a quick example just to show you guys how it works in practice rather than me just saying it and you guys are like, well, what if, what if, what's this, what's this? Uh, and that's how I do it. And after that, you need to make sure that you're giving them a lot of attention. And then what I mean by attention is if we're going to training and we're going to coaches and edit coach assignment, I've got this set up, right? And I'm going to do a video on this in training in general and coaches and how to maximize your coaching setup and all that stuff. So this is like sort of like a little a little video about it. So what you've got to do in layman's terms is get the highest coaching stars and get the coach workload on light, right? Because there's load, there's light, average, and heavy. Now I've got again the luxury now of having a lot of coaches. It wasn't always that way. So sometimes you've got to prioritize. But what I would do is, is I would prioritize a light coaching coaching workload over stars. So I would have lower stars but a light coaching workload. And what happens with that? is it means there's a lot of coaches, if you can see here, um, on every single um, unit, on every single like defending, goalkeeping, strength, possession, possession technical, possession tactical, there's at least three coaches on, ev on every single one, overseeing. It's five on the possession tactical, five on possession technical. Um, if we've got one on there, the workload might be heavy. We want more coaches on each one. We don't want one guy doing the whole of one thing because then... If he's doing 25 players on one thing, 
he can't give his attention to all of them. So if you've got three or four, they can split them into groups and one coach can do six players, six players. It just makes sense, right? In real life, the more coaches, the better coaches, the better you will pro progress. The last thing you can do after playing them in the first team and loaning them out and checking facilities on the loans, right? Making sure they're gonna play and their, and their facilities. Always do that. The higher level you can give them, the better. Premier League is the highest rep league in the world. Players will develop the quickest playing 90 minutes in the Premier League. If you don't want to loan them out and you don't want to play them in the first team or you can't, now the last thing you can do is put them in the under-19s. Now, the under-19s for me um, is a very useful tool, obviously, but it's more than that. So, under-19s as well also have their own set of coaches, as we know. So, we go to under-19s, training, coaches, there, right? Now... As you can see, I've got them all on light again. And I've got the stars as high as I can possibly get them for right now. Now, they're not as high as my first team, but that's to be expected because the under-19s coaches usually aren't as good as the actual coaches. But this is massively important. Massively, massively important. A lot of people neglect this. They really do neglect it. They set up their first team coaches. Even then, some people neglect that. But people hardly, if ever, use this page on the under-19s coaching um overall responsibilities right so when players are in the under 19s team and i can't find anything for them in the first team they're also getting a really high level of coaching um in there too right because obviously facilities are the facilities that are used throughout the whole club right don't think by the way this was in my other video um in the intake video I touched upon this, but I'm going to touch upon it again in case you've not watched that video. Um, I would highly recommend it. But anyway, the training facilities are the facilities that are used for all players in your club, even the under-19s, right? Youth facilities are not for players that you can see. So the youth facilities are for the players that we can't see, i.e. in the academy that are waiting to come through the intakes, right? You will notice that your players <clears throat> will improve a lot more, a lot quicker. And then obviously after that, after you've considered all those things, there's actual training in the first team. And uh, what I would suggest with this is, is never give them a free period, basically. So this this week here at the bottom against Real Sociedad, I'll show you as an example. Obviously we play Real Madrid there, and then we recover here and we rest, no problem. But then here, we don't give them any sort of rest. Now I do like the light blue ones. If you right click on here, you can actually get like a quick tab. And I use the general ones a lot. These are the light, these are the dark blue ones, right? I, a lot I use outfield, I use attacking, position, possession, defending, tactical, physical. I use them all. I use goalkeeping from now on. Yeah. But um, the, the AI put this in, defending, disengaged, and defending, engaged. That's fine. I don't mind it. I'm not against it. But um, the little gaps, I fill them in with, uh, with attacking, defending, tactical, possession, and outfield. And I have noticed a massive difference. It's not, it's not a brain surgery. It's really not. If you've got a player with good personality... Give them match time, wherever you can. Um, if they haven't, give them some mentoring and put them in the under-19s. Uh, loan them out if you've got some players or a good affiliate club as well. A good. If you've got a good affiliate club, I don't have any because I don't loan players out, really. Um, and if I do, they go to Spain and I can find them myself. But um, if you've got like, if you want to target a specific club that you want to send players to, maybe you like them in real life or you know they've got good facilities or you've had good um, experiences with them before, try and get them as an affiliate club. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. If you've got any questions, as always, write them in the comments below. I may have missed a few things. If I have, I apologize, but that's what I do. Um, if you've got any questions about anything else that I haven't covered, like I said, please leave them down below. And until next time, thank you for watching. Goodbye.